Let's uh, talk right now uh, about one of the missions and also another big story in the news as well about working from home officers uh, with Harry Tangy, who's a former police sergeant and joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, Harry. Good morning. There's a lot of love for you in this household as well, Julia. It's all, Thank it's, you. It's all getting very strange. Genuinely, you know, I do not live in a house where people are this nice to each other. Anyway, thank you so for joining us, Harry. Um, now, look, um, two stories I want to talk to you about. In particular, one of these missions, uh, which is about having this sort of effectively named local police officer, Bobby's on the beat. We're told 13,000 uh, more um, police officers, well, 13,000 more police officers, special constables and PCSOs. So they're not all new police officers. About half of them are police officers, but half of of those were already going to be recruited already so it's only an extra 3,000 new police officers Chris Philp the shadow home secretary uh, and former Tory um, police minister has pointed out but there actually be someone named you better look up the, oh, oh this you know it's John John blogs he's the local PC that I contact if I've got a problem um, is this doable is this achievable will it work will it cut crime well it's happening now so he's just oh. I'm just looking at new key uh, website there's one inspector, Steve Johnson, Ian Weger, the sergeant. Then there's four police constables, three PCSOs. They're all there. I've checked various other areas. I'm sure we're so not the, the only... So it's the normal already? Yeah, so best, isn't it? I'm, I'm, uh, and usually with College of Policing, what happens in one force happens in other forces. It's that you do get a national approach. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some small print to this that makes it slightly different. And... Remember that special constables are volunteers um, yeah. and they're leaving in their droves because, quite frankly, they're very badly treated whilst they are working. They're left to their own devices, have poor supervision, yeah. um, and they get the same disciplinary, overzealous disciplinary regulations as everyone else. And they say, do you know what? I don't it's need not, this. It's not worth I'm it. Off. Yeah. That's fair enough. So, so this isn't really going to be a game changer. And what about the Bobby's on the beat thing? Because we know that's what the public want. We know people feel very reassured of how police on the street. I would have thought it's rather obvious that police officers on the street who know the local police, you know, know local shop owners and, and, and regular people, and they can garner information. Oh, no, 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 he lives down there. No, that's the guy you want to catch. He was the one who was shoplifting yesterday or whatever. That that actually would be quite useful. Does, does Bobby's on the beat actually cut crime? Uh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, we are different from Dixon and the Dot Green days. I yeah. mean, I, I really enjoyed a bit of foot patrol uh, away from the telephone. Um, and people do come up to you and they mention something that's happened down the road and Billy yeah. Bloggs, who's up to no good, they wouldn't have come into a police station yeah. in other words, otherwise. So it's really important. Um, but there were many times where people would go on the patrol and they'd say, I'm sorry, we've run out of jobs. Can you get into a car and answer those immediate? So they yes. are fire brigade policing. They're putting out fires as opposed to... Yeah. Um, but doing... maybe those fires wouldn't have been set if some, a police officer had been in the street. I mean, oh, undoubtedly. Well, one, undoubtedly. Thing, so one of the things I find frustrating to my local area, again, you know, bag thefts and things, uh, but I mean, on a mass scale but, and phone thefts, but also... The, the bane, the bane. I mean, I'm lucky enough to live in a nice area, but it's like the cycling, but really fast cycling on the pavement, the littering, all the mess and everything. And then you get police officers, and every now and then, like once every four months, two or three of them in their high vis vests will stand there. So we're, we're stopping yeah. the people cycling. You think, well, that's yeah. well, what a surprise! They're not cycling on the pavement in front of you. What you should do is be in plain clothes filming them all, and then someone round the corner is in the high-vis who then catches them all. And so they'll always think that they might be caught. I mean, I'm thinking, this is... I'm not a police officer who's trained, but I'm thinking this is basic 101 policing, no? Yeah, exactly. And and the problem you have, and I found it in my 30 years, the wheel would go round. There'd be mm. a big drive to get rid of bureaucracy. That releases us to get on the streets. Yeah. And it happens for, ooh, two or three weeks. And then somebody puts in a, I need this form and this form before I accept a file. Yeah. And therefore, we've got to go on a training course. And then we're suddenly back to more paperwork yeah. than we had before. There was, a for, there was a file called an abbreviated file. That was the bare minimum, just to see if there was a case to take it to court or not. You know, when you knew you had a loser, but you needed an adult to check it. Yeah. That, that abbreviated file pretty much took on the same role as a full file in the end. Yeah. And how many, how many pages? What, well, and that's presumably a statement from the officer, the, the witness statement, the evidence folder. How, how long would that take? Like, I'll give you the example again of my simple basic mm. bag theft. Some CCTV, got the name of the guy, who's a suspect, blah, blah, blah. My statement. How long, how many pages would that be and how long would that take to put together for an officer? 
Well, if, if you get a suspect and you do an interview, then you're talking uh, probably a couple of old shifts because um, you've, you think you've done the job. Then you've got to get all the uh, you've you've got to edit all the uh, police logs so that yep. one is disclosable for court. Then you've got to do disclosure. Remember, we had problems with disclosure and yep. officers not disclosing everything. That that can take as long as the file itself. Right. Because you know this whole disclosure is not read by anyone at the court, but if it's not there or something's missing, you'll the, lose the case. The whole thing falls apart. So it's sort of a one-minute criminal act, massive, yeah. massive admin for me and, and cost to me, um, but, but basically you're looking at probably a week of police time, even if the evidence is all there. Well, pretty much, involving for everyone. One officer. counted up all the hours. Yeah. Um, and one, one little shoplifting, you could tell, one little shoplifting, they can take the longest because you've got various shops involved. You're going to need to get evidence from each one. You've got to exhibit them. You've then got to search the guy's house if they're a big one, big big shoplifter yeah. and known previous to see if there's even more stuff. And then you've got to put this thing together and, of course, they get a £25 fine, don't they? Which is why they don't bother in the first place and they know this. There you are. Mm. Well, again, I'm just feeling so uplifted by today's guests. I can't tell you. I mean, here's something else that's going to um, uh, upset people, uh, which is a, uh, an audit of a, a public uh, job advertisements uh, by the Telegraph has found that police forces are allowing staff who are investigating the most serious crimes going, sexual offences, including child sexual abuse, are being allowed to work from home, funded by the taxpayer. 42% of police staff jobs funded by the taxpayer are allowing home working. And we've already had social workers, I know, certainly locked down almost, being allowed to work from home. I mean, a lot of people leaving the profession because like, you, you literally don't think you can help anybody and it's a godforsaken job as it is. At least you feel you're helping people in their homes. Uh, but you can't do these jobs from home, can you? Well, I, I think a lot of it, and my, my girlfriend, was, she was working in the paedophile unit um, in, in Newcastle, in Northumbria, and uh, it was only six months she could take of it. So you've got, you got the mental health side of things. Oh. Whether they're looking at videos to assess criminal offences or not is one thing, or whether they're dealing with the outskirts of it, the preliminary stuff, the file preparation maybe, or something like that, I, d I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it has the the obvious risks because even though checks can be made to know who you live with and automatic ones are who you live with who your friends are who your relatives are but you don't know who's walking through the door either yeah. so i think it only take a couple of really bad publicity uh, incidents of data being yeah. um released publicly or whatever for it to go wrong but generally speaking i mean i worked on covid um sorry covid i worked on uh, g7 uh, when I just left the police, I was called back to work six weeks. Uh, I'd what's, never what's worked G7? hard. Sorry, G7 was the Carbis Bay, um, the oh, summit. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like COP Oh, wait, you meant the summit, right? Okay, yes, right, yeah. Yeah, sorry, apologies. And um, it was the one after G6. <laughs> no, sorry, cheeky. Um, it, it's, it's, but it was a lot. Of, I've never worked so hard uh, because yeah. it was on the phone mainly liaising with Cornwall County Council, other police officers yeah. and whatever. But, and I was able to do also, people are able to, I mean, I've got, the reason I'm here is um, I've finished my, my career as such, was going to move on to something else, paid my mortgage, mm. got divorced, usual thing, <laughs> got a mother with dementia and, and heart yeah. failure. So it meant I can, she needs 24 hours, 24 you can be seven, in the house with her. Right. And I can be here, but pretty much she's asleep for most of the time during the day, you know? So um, it allows people, and people who are sick or people who are more immobile because they've got an injury, they can, they still can do the contribute. full amount of work. OK, all right, I'll be persuaded on that. I'll, I'll take your word on that. Harry Tang, I so appreciate uh, you joining us. Thank you very much indeed.